Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Hybrid, coming to you from Charvi Executive Suite. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café Con Leche every Friday. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Lady Deans Off will speak to the Bronx Gaming Network founder, Rudy Blanco, as he discusses creating a safe and inclusive space dedicated to gaming, digital art, and content creation. And then we'll be joined by Holistic Resources Facilitator, Bronx Holistic Healing Creator, Abna Anum, to discuss healing and wellness events for Bronx residents. Later on in the show, Bobby C brings us an up to date with the latest headlines in the world of sports. And lastly, this week's open artist spotlight shines on electro Latin duo Uptown Royalty NYC with a performance at the end of the show. So sit back and prepare. All this and more is headed your way because now we are officially open. Welcome to Open Hybrid. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café Con Leche. For the next hour, coming to you from Charri Executive Suite, inviting you to get social with us online, that is. Tweet us and follow us on Instagram at BronxNet TV and like us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, while you're there, don't forget, follow me on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Insta Stories, and LinkedIn at Rina Valentin. So our first guest is the founder of the Bronx Gaming Network, a safe and inclusive community-centered space dedicated to gaming, digital art, and content creation for those that are underrepresented in the mainstream media. They provide creative tech education, professional development, and mentorship to gamers and creatives of all ages. Here now to share more is the Bronx Gaming Network founder, Rudy Blanco. Hey, <laughs> how are you? Rina, thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure. Um, uh, that's that's a lot. I'm, I'm a new founder, by the way. I wanted to put that out there. And I'm just so excited uh, to be sharing our story uh, with you all. And um, as Rina said, I am the founder of the Bronx Gaming Network, located right here in the Bronx. We are New York City friendly, but we do the Bronx and we program for the Bronx and create experiences for our communities here. I love it. Oh my God. I'm like <laughs> jealous, Rudy, because you just designed a lifestyle for yourself that says, I'm going to be a kid for the rest of my life. <laughs> You know, I, I get a lot of slack for it, but I'm here for it. You know, like it's it's been a long battle. I've uh, taught for the New York City Department of Education for over 15 years. And my six years in, you know, my students were very clear, like gaming, tech, right, coding, um, all sorts of things related to technology and education and entertainment were things that they were really, really excited about. So we created programming and fast forward to today, and now we're a whole company and a, and a whole space dedicated to doing this work and putting folks on the pathway to careers in gaming and creative tech. Yeah, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're a visionary, darling, because, you know, okay. it's here to stay. And as much as we want it, no, you're a visionary. You are ahead of the game, right? And I'm sharing that on air because <laughs> it is so true. As a parent, you know, I struggle with the whole gaming situation. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's one aspect of the gaming that we need to take into consideration. You know, like my daughter's into Roblox and so forth. And, and the one thing I will say is that that was their salvation during the pandemic. That was how they were able to socialize with each other, you know? And that's not something that we, that should be overlooked because that is now part of their, uh, their culture. Absolutely. Right. It's it's a it's an identity forming thing. Right. And and I, you know, I was explaining, you know, we were talking before and this idea of over the last five years, just having to work 
and, and explain to uh, other adults, parents, educators, administrators, lawmakers around the relevance of gaming and online games to this particular generation. And, and like what you were saying, um, I mean, I grew up in the 90s. I grew up playing Manhunt and Freeze Tag outside, playing with the pompa, the little roller skates with the four wheels, not even the roller blades. Like, you speak right? my language, you speak my <laughs> I grew up, I, I grew up doing that and out there and even then I remember my mom always having issues with oh make sure you're in before it gets dark or make sure you know this is going down but it's different now you know and and even before the pandemic a lot of our young people were just that's where they were congregating you know a moment after school where if you're done with what you should be doing which is in this case homework and assignments you get a chance to go hang out with your friends now the only thing is that they get to do it at home right under the comfort of home under the you know care of the family that they're with but at the same time it doesn't ignore the fact that there's a lot of things that happen in these online environments and online communities that didn't necessarily happen when we were growing up right out in the streets. And a lot of that is about safety, right? And a lot of parents, they want their kids to be safe, but because they have no interest in the medium and in gaming, right? They they just don't dive in, um, but they're aware of the bad parts, right? So I've been just getting into this place where how do we work with parents to teach them, hey, this is a good thing, one, for their social emotional development, um, right? But also how do we teach them to be safe? At the end of the day, the truth is what I communicate to parents is that we can't eliminate, you know, toxicity from the world and we can't lim eliminate all the violence and stuff. But what we can do is prepare them to deal with that. Right. And, and what we do at BGN when we work with our gaming mentors and our younger gamers is we show them how to block, how to, you know, how to make sure that when they're playing, they're playing with friends, that they're going to worlds that are appropriate and being able to pinpoint and figure out what those things are, are things that are not curricular arena if that makes right. sense and right. educators yeah, I get it. I get it. no because because that that is the world we're, we're we're actually heading into and it's good that you're educating all ages so that's a that's a great uh segue into so it's just walk us through some of your programming and and the age brackets and what these programs uh consist of Absolutely. So before I explain the programming, there's one thing that I kind of I'm very, very passionate about. And it's this idea of community before competition, right there. New York City is moving in a particular way around bringing in funding for game design and esports, which is like competitive gaming. Um, not everyone wants to do that. Right. So one of the things that we do is community before competition. Right. So over these last year and a half, we were building online community for a while. And what I mean by this is safe places for people to either come play together, come watch others play, or just hang out with others. And in doing so, we were able to develop a few programs that there's three that we're working on right now. The first is a program that's meant for young ones, right? Which is a, a mentorship program. Think big brother, big sister, right? But gaming, um, uh, where we connect young folks, uh, whether at the high school level, right, or at the college age or industry level. And we pair them with young ones, not for formal instruction per se, but straight up, how are you? How was your day? Like, what's bothering you? What's getting to you, right? And then we work really hard to train these mentors to utilize these, these gaming platforms as a way for them to, to really provide that mentorship. Okay, so support. before you move on to the next thing, just for clarity purposes, do these mentors operate through the gaming networks or is this an in-person uh, uh, exchange? It's a mixture of both because we're learning okay. a lot, right? When we first started on Twitch, it was mostly online and we had, you know, cases of Bronx streamers and content creators who we touched base with the parents and we watched them and we took care of them while we were on stream, right? So there were people who were live playing a game and we knew that we had, you know, through privacy stuff, we knew that we had some of our young mentees in these chats. So we worked with them and we showed them what good streaming looks like, right? Like mindful of the language and, uh, you know, who you engage and who you do not engage. But we've also found that over the last year, some folks just want to bring their kids in. And in those cases, we invite them here. And uh, we have a kid's corner where our gamer mentors sit down with the young ones and they play Roblox and they show them different worlds and give them a sense of what they can and can't be doing. But most importantly, we connect them with other young ones in their age group so they can continue to have self-moderated play instead of relying on randos and people who are just weird online, you know? Got it, got it. So what's that age bracket for the kid's corner? 
so for the kids corner, we usually invite folks in ages uh, 10 to about 13. Uh, by the time they get to middle school, we're uh, beginning them in some of our uh, just mentorship programs in that they come in, they get to learn more about the games they're passionate about. Uh, we start exposing them to some of our programs that we do in collaboration with the Dream Yard Project. So Dream Yard Project, who, you know, they're all over the Bronx. They've been around for 27 years. I'm an employee of Dream Yard, slowly, you know, transitioning to running BGN, but we also bring them in through there. And at the high school level, uh, that's where we really, really get in. So we do things like gaming and journalism. Uh, we have high schoolers that are right now the space that we have here. We have a group that's getting paid by Summer Youth Employment to design a music festival in this game called PlayStation Dreams that is going to put local businesses in there. It's going to create, you know, assets from around the Bronx to show the, the, the Dreams verse and the PlayStation world that the Bronx exists, not just as a physical borough, but also in the assets and the worlds that we are creating online. Right, which is the, the world we're, we're leading into. And, you know, that was a lot of information for uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar with any of this language to digest. However, you know, I, I'm just trying to, like, simplify it, right? Because, Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's great. It's great. It's great. But it's good that we're having this conversation because it's real. And and the fact of the matter is, is that I'm hoping that at least through this conversation, we're, in, we're piquing the interest of some parent that may be watching to have a better understanding of what mm -hmm. their, their child is involved in, right? Absolutely. Because there's the, sh the, the turn on and shut off point, but what's going on in between? And, and, and that's when it's of no interest then you know you're kind of leaving it out you know to explore whatever it is that they want mm -hmm. so um without offending any you know gamer that may be watching in the age range of 7 to 13 but that program that you were just referencing is called gamer sitter right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you that's the thing the young it. ones the young ones don't mind gamer sitter but don't tell a high schooler that it's a gamer sitter it's a gamer <laughs> coach at that age you know they don't want to be set they want to be coached <laughs> right 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 okay so fine and then um and then you you mentioned twitch and then you also mentioned the um the youth that's employed over the summer i'm going to assume they're coming in under the content creators academy from the bronx is that so correct that that one this is actually the one that we're doing here is a summer youth employment program offered by the dream yard project so that isn't our content creators academy um we actually did put a hold on content creators academy because interestingly enough a lot of parents had young ones that were 8 to 11 who wanted to be on Twitch, but it wasn't an appropriate place for them to be. So we kind of shuttled the program down a little bit just because we want to focus again on that community piece so that when we're ready to teach young people how to become content creators, they have a few years of experience of engaging with them, talking with them, meeting with them. Because um, we also want to be mindful of them. We want to protect them because being live and going live, like it's a lot of work, uh, especially for the adults related to those young ones. And if a parent doesn't even care about the video game they're playing, I can guarantee you they're going to not want to <laughs> jump on Twitch to go watch them play this video game, you know? Right. And so um, we're out of time, but I really think it's so important that we um, also elaborate a little further on, on the functions of Twitch because, um, you know, I know there's somebody on and I'm not really even that familiar with Twitch. So really quickly in the most succinct manner, give us a breakdown of what happens in that Twitch community. Got it. So Twitch is essentially um, a channel where gamers and not just gamers, people who want to stream to the world or live stream to the world can jump on, go live and on this platform, build a community. When you say go live, they're on camera. They're on camera. Yes. So what I mean by go live. So Twitch is a platform where folks can get on camera, right? Connect their, their PlayStations, their computers, their radios, whatever it is, and they can do a live stream to the world where then people can join them in chat and they can think TikTok, right? Or those Instagram lives. It's just a, a platform specifically for gamers to do this. And it's so popular because it's essentially modern TV, right? Anyone can create a channel for free. And if you grow the right viewership, you can start bringing in income, right? We've had young people, even at the middle school ages to high school who started on Twitch and within three weeks were making income, you know, because as we build communities in person, those in-person eyes turn into Twitch viewers as well. So a lot of folks who wouldn't have normally had exposure, right, and viewership are now in a place where 
they can speak to their community directly. Um, and uh, it's not just for gaming. You have people who do cooking, who do music, who do DJs, who do modeling, who do sewing. I mean, you name it, it's on Twitch. And what we're trying to do at BGN is create a real hyper local Twitch environment um, so we can bring the money home. You know how it is. <laughs> and not only that, they can afford the um, the coaching in, in finances as well, Absolutely. right? So that if there's a coach there guiding them along the way, um, everything is kind of kept copacetic as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, just rolling in the dough in whatever way that they can, which is also something that needs to be looked out for. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Rena. And listen, you and I can go on and on and on. So what's going to happen? We're going to have to have you on again at some other point in your development because I think all of this is very fascinating and I think it's important that the, um, the whatever, Generation X and Z are, are aware of, well, the Z is the ones that are actually active in, um, in this platform, and uh, but X is at least interested enough to understand um, the, all the dynamics because there's so many layers mm -hmm. to this and, and so many uh, you know new platforms and innovative ways for them to connect that um, it's a little challenging to to keep track of. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I, I want to thank you for for taking you. it upon yourself to uh, incorporate your educational background and honor the, the 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 reality of where we are right now right because this is the modern way of of not only creating community but even learning so because there is a learning component to this as well you know just because they're gaming don't think that it's just about gaming there, there's there's other things they're learning in that process but we're gonna have to say that for another time let's do it <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rudy, for Thank what you're you, doing. Thank you, Rina. And, and really quickly, before we go, if people wanted to participate and become part of the Bronze Gaming Network, what, what do they need to do? So if you want to learn a little bit more, participate in our awesome events, join us on Instagram at The Bronx Gaming Network. We post all of our events there. You can also go to our website, thebronxgamingnetwork.com. Um, feel free to sign up to our newsletter, and we hope to see you in one of our local adult game nights, which happens the last Thursday of every month, or our community game nights here in our game space, which is, happens uh, the first two Fridays of every month. And you can get all of that on our social media. Ooh, I love that. All inclusive, mi gente. Ya lo sabe. Vengan uno, vengan todos. I love it. I love Aquí it. Aquí jugamos todos. That's it. Children at heart forever. <laughs> Rudy Blanco, everybody, uh, Bronx Gaming Network founder. And once again, for more information, you can visit the BronxGamingNetwork.com and or follow them on Instagram at Bronx Gaming Network. We have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a holistic workshop and services dedicated to Bronx residents. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome back. Our next guest is a holistic resources facilitator and consultant. She is also the creator of Bronx Holistic Healing and through her curated events, she offers exposure to holistic healing and wellness modalities to all Bronxites to help balance mind, 
body and soul. Here to share more is Bronx Holistic Healing creator, Abna Anum. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Hello. Greetings. Thank you for being here with us. Um, this is ha- actually a topic that is dear to my heart. So thank you for bringing it to the Bronx and offering it to our community. Um, and let's just talk about your journey, because from what I read here, it's like you spent a, a lot of time traveling to like different uh, boroughs to obtain this knowledge and, um, and then realize that, you know, there's people here in the Bronx that offer these services as well. And now you've taken it upon yourself to facilitate these events. So let, let, let's just talk about that journey really quick. Certainly. So I would attend a lot of events in Brooklyn and in Manhattan, and I was always encountering people who lived in the Bronx. Um, and I said, you know, enough is enough. We need to have some things in the Bronx. I don't want to always get on the train and go under tunnels, you know, for these kinds of events and experiences. So I knew a lot of holistic healers that were in the Bronx, but then I would see them doing events in Manhattan and Brooklyn. So basically um, in 2012, there was a shop that wanted to do a health and wellness event. So I was what you call a professional volunteer. I volunteered at a lot of different events. So I said, okay, this is going to be my first one. And I just contacted the different practitioners that I know. So we had yoga demonstrations, we had foot reflexology, we had massage. And what I remember about that day in January was that the owner said that they were glad that it snowed because they didn't think they could accommodate any more people. And from then on, Bronx Holistic Healing was born. Well, congratulations on on even acknowledging how needed it is. And and, and, and let's talk a little bit about these holistic um, modalities, these alternative modalities, because um, I, I introduced you in, in balancing mind, body, soul. And, um, and, and so there's pretty much, um, really, there's no one way to get to that place of wellness. And so um, the fact that you were offering these events that are teaching people to self-sustain, let, let, let's just talk about all of these different aspects that are being provided uh, on a regular basis, no less, right? Because I understand you also conduct like a, a weekly virtual uh, series. Yes. So every Thursday I have what is called Transformation Thursdays. And that's been happening since November of 2020. And I'm about to have week 90. So it's always amazing that I found about 90 people who are willing to come on a Zoom on a Thursday and talk about holistic topics that they're very, very passionate about. So basically, I've been very interested in offering opportunities for Bronx-based, primarily Bronx-based practitioners to share their information, to share their wealth of knowledge, to help improve people's lives. And so what are these um, practices that we're referencing? I mean, you shared a little bit about um, foot re- uh, reflexology and yoga, and but there's more to it. There's crystals, there's chakras. Like, let's just share with our viewers like everything that's really being discussed because again, there is no one way However, if they don't know about it, then they're they're unaware. So yes, yeah, so we do discuss um chakras and crystals. I like to say I'm a I need crystal buyers anonymous. <laughs> and we discuss the use of essential oils. Um, aromatherapy I found to be a very, very powerful modality, as well as the foot reflexology and massage. And um, every time I get a massage, I say to myself, why don't I do this like every week? This is such an important tool in self-care. And basically when coordinating events events, I think of empowerment, not just telling people, okay, this is the pill that you would take, you would do this two or three times a day, but to empower people, to let them know that the power is in their hand. I like to say that choice is our superpower. So I like to have people leave the events with information that they can use to improve their wellness. And so why have you chosen to make this your mission? Was there something that happened to you that 
made you uh, become, in, you know, more knowledgeable of these practices and, and, and understanding that it's something, again, that I think more people need to be exposed to, which is why I'm glad we have you on air sharing um, these, these services that you offer. Um, I want to say eight years ago, I contracted chicken pox and I was already an adult and it was the middle of the summer and I had chicken pox and you can imagine it being August, it's not a very comfortable feeling. So one of the things that I first learned about was, How many was, ago was that? How many years ago was that? Oh, I want to say it was about one, about 21 years ago, 21, 21 years. years ago. Okay, yeah. I just want to answer that, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I was definitely an adult when I contracted um, chicken pox. And so I learned about herbs. Um, I was at some event in the park and someone was talking to me about echinacea, which I had never heard of before. And that really kind of opened the door. And from then I learned about um, essential oils. And then I learned about um, massage and just began experiencing different things. And it really just opened my eyes and definitely made a, a shift. And so I look back at that as like the, the turning point. That's what really, really got me on this path. Right. It's about being proactive with self and, and not being so uh, reliant on somebody else's diagnosis, right? Obviously, we have specialists, that's what the doctors are there for, to really bring in the science factor of it. And But there's other aspects to our existence, right? And, and so I'm really glad that, and thank you for sharing and being transparent about what uh, motivated you into not only discovering these modalities for yourself, but now making it your mission to pass it forward. I mean, we happen to be going through a very trivial time right now with this monkeypox, and, and nobody's suggesting that that this is going to heal that or or prevent you from getting it. But the idea is that you remain proactive in, in making sure that your immune system is, is stimulated, and, and that requires every form of attention, right? Especially as you age, and when you age, your body needs assistance. Absolutely. The body that you have at 40 is not the same one that you have at 13. <laughs> but um, there are things that you can do to maintain and keep your vitality up. So I just like to say that you definitely have the, the choice. And one thing that I do with my events, people say, oh, you do do health fairs. I don't do health fairs. I like to say these are healing and wellness experiences because we don't have what you might see the typical fair, someone doing the diabetes screening or the blood pressure screening because for me, sometimes that's already putting it out there that you're sick and that you already have a condition. So with the healing and wellness experiences that I do, we have people who can speak on things that you can do to strengthen yourself, to build up your immunity, the things that you can do to improve your wellness. Well, we thank you for bringing it here to our viewers. Um, I do want to mention once again, she does have a free weekly virtual series on Zoom on Thursdays at 7 p.m. That is Abna. Anum, a bronze holistic healing creator. And if you're interested in participating in these free weekly virtual series on Zoom, uh, you can visit uh, them on IG at Bronx holistic healing and for upcoming events and more you can visit bronxhealing.com not dot wix.com slash my site yes right. bronx bronx holistic healing dot wix.com slash <laughs> my site <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful <laughs> Well, thank you for, for, for repeating it. Uh, I'm sure they, they, they probably needed it in case they were writing it. All right, you guys. Uh, once again, that was Abana Anum uh, from the Bronx Holistic Healing. Uh, stay tuned because Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next. The Dominican Day Parade may be right around the corner, but who says that's where the fun has to start or end? That's why Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson, joined by several other community leaders here over at Grand Concourse, came to unveil the return of La Gran Parada Dominicana, which has been more than 30 years in the making and will serve to highlight the innumerable contributions the Dominican community has made towards the Bronx.
The event was put on a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but now it's back and seemingly stronger than ever. As the first Dominican deputy borough president, for me, this is this is personal. So I'm really, really excited to be able to celebrate in community, to be able to celebrate the heritage and the culture of my Dominicanidad, uh, as well as every single Dominican uh, resident here in the Bronx. So it's, it's a super exciting time, but we invite the entire Bronx to come out with us. Uh, we're only one of the fastest growing because we're welcomed into this borough, because we're growing in community with community. The unveiling ceremony was full of music, food, as well as refreshments. While there may be a Dominican Day Parade, Dominican Pride is every day. Reporting from Grand Concourse, I'm Noah Osborne. Aaron Judge headlines sports in the Bronx this week. Of course he does. We kick things off with our weekly home run tracker for the Bronx Bomber star, the Judge Report. The pending free agent is having a year of years here in the BX. He blasted number 42 over the weekend and entered the week on pace for 66 long balls this season. That mark would surpass Yankee great Roger Maris of 61 in 1961. That remains the American League home run record. Judge needs to average just one dinger every three games to eclipse Maris's record. Just one, just one dinger every three games. Our Bronx Athlete of the Week goes to the favorite for the American League Most Valuable Player Award, and that, of course, is Mr. Judge. He continued to show that he can keep pace with legends, becoming the second fastest player in American League slash National League history to blast 200 career home runs and the Bombers 8-2 victory over the Kansas City Royals at Yankee Stadium last Saturday afternoon. Judge doing his thing with many legends looking on during Yankees Old-Timers Day. Aaron Judge, man, having a season to remember. Judge's Major League leading 42nd home run was his 12th long ball in 14 games, the most in a 14-game span in franchise history. He eclipses the legendary Babe Ruth, 41 homers in 1928, for the most home runs ever hit by a Yankee before August 1st. That stat comes a a surge that puts Judge on track to shatter Maris's AL single season record. Judge taking the fifth spot here on the front end of five on five. Meantime, the newest Yankee outfielder comes in at four. Ahead of this week's MLB trade deadline, the Yankees made their first move. They acquired all-star outfielder Andrew Benatendi from the Royals for three pitching prospects. The 28-year-old former Boston Red Sox star comes to the Bronx batting a pristine 320 that earned him his first all-star game berth. He will replace Joey Gallo in the outfield. The newest Yankee and former Sox champion loves his new address. I've seen how this place can get and how, how uh, pumped up and how energized it can get, so I'm excited to be out there and, you know, and be able to call this my home stadium now. Yankees also picking up some pitching at the deadline, getting Frankie Montas from the A's and Scott Efros from the Cubs. In the third spot, the Yanks crosstown rivals the New York Mets. While the pinstripers have headlined in the American League, the Mets continue to be among the toast of the town in the National League. That included a mini two-game sweep over the Yanks last week in Queens. The Mets sweeping the Subway Series and also feeling good after signing their first round pick in the MLB draft. Here's more with the franchise's potential future starting catcher. I've been working out, swinging the bat a little bit, throwing a little bit, just doing it at a very light amount right now. Um, obviously, it's going to ramp up in the next couple weeks. So uh, right now, just try to keep a little bit together, and then that's how I stay in shape for the last four or five weeks. In the present, excited for the Bronx version of the Subway Series later this month. We shift gears here to the two spot for our racing spotlight. Our BronxNet cameras captured the IndyCar slash NASCAR crossover at Indianapolis Motor Speedway last weekend. What an incredible weekend of racing at IMS. Friend of the show, Alexander Rossi is back on top, folks. The drought is finally over for him. Rossi won the Gallagher Grand Prix on Saturday on the IMS road course to snap a 
49 race winless streak, earning his first victory since capturing the NTT IndyCar race on June 23rd, 2019 at Road America. If you were keeping count, that's 1,133 days ago. That was Rossi's eighth career victory. Here's more with Alexander Rossi. There's a lot of special things about this race. Um, the fan turnout here for, for us as IndyCar drivers is always amazing and, and seeing everyone with the merch and the autograph session, it's just it's a, it's a very special thing today. In NASCAR, A.J. Allmendinger continued his dominance of the road course racing with a victory in the Xfinity Series at IMS. He couldn't stop buzzing afterward. I've gotten to win a lot of races in the last couple of years, and two of them are here. And those are the most special races that I could possibly have. To wrap, last weekend at IMS, Tyler Reddick starred in the Cup Series. He won the pole, and then at the end of this race, he could feel the pressure when he restarted from the lead twice in the waning laps at IMS. But handling pressure is something that Reddick has been used to the last several weeks of the season. Just 19 days after he announces that he would be leaving Richard Childress Racing following the 2023 season, Reddick captures his second Cup victory of the year in a race with a wild finish finish where Ross Chastain cut the course and crossed the finish line second but was penalized 30 seconds for the move. Watch a lot of racing at this this venue uh, as a kid growing up. A lot of really incredible drivers have had won at this racetrack and it's been really cool to be part of the group of drivers that have won here. A weekend of legends in racing came during a weekend when the NBA world said goodbye to one of its brightest stars, its greatest champion, and a legend in the world of sports. The sports world mourns the passing of Bill Russell, the cornerstone of the Boston Celtics dynasty that won eight straight titles and 11 overall during his career. He died last Sunday, the Hall of Famer was 88 years old. Russell was more than just a basketball superstar and a world-class athlete. As a dedicated human rights activist, he fought against racial inequality both in and out of professional sports. In February of 2011, Barack Obama presented Russell with the Presidential Medal of Freedom at the White House. Rest in peace, Bill. You will be dearly missed on and off the court. Bill Russell is number one, like always. To the back end of 5 on 5 we go, 5 sports stories and recap, and 5 to look out for in the week and months ahead. We begin with NFL camps reopening. The fall season is looming. We caught up with the Bronx's own Saquon Barkley of the New York Football Giants. 25 now, um, year 5, and one of the older, one of the older guys in the, in the building. Um, and, you know, been, I've been through a lot of ups and downs. Uh, I got to use that to my advantage. Um, I can use that to lead, uh, especially with some of the adversity that I had to, had to deal with the last couple of years. Uh, I think that not only helped me as an athlete, but you know, just as a person, as a man, as a brother, um, and as a teammate, and um, just try to be there and, and lead the best I can by the stuff that I learned in the, the previous four years and the stuff I will continue to learn. Counting upwards here as we always do. That was number one on the back end. This is number two on this date in Bronx sports history. Back in our time machine we go on August 5th, 2007 with his 246 career victory and 8-5 win over KC. Yankees right-hander Mike Messina becomes the winningest pitcher in baseball history without a 20-win season. Moose will reach the elusive milestone with a 20-9 record the next season, his last in the major leagues. The Hall of Famer, of course, doing that in 2008 as we said goodbye to the old Yankee Stadium here in the Bronx. Some very good memories here for us at BronxNet. At three, Brooklyn Nets player Edmund Sumner surprised more than 30 children who were attending a Nets basketball academy summer camp at Felician University recently. While at the camp, Sumner spoke to the group about the importance of sportsmanship and fundamentals and also engaged with the kids in various basketball drills. This summer, the Nets are hosting nine summer camps across the New York area for children ages 6 to 14 of all skill levels. For more, visit nba.com forward slash Nets. In at four, the Yankees open a weekend road series tonight in St. Louis. The Mets nabbed the fifth spot hosting divisional rival Atlanta. That series opened yesterday at Citi Field and continues throughout the weekend in Flushing. To the C-list for a new doc that is a must-see featuring some of the Bronx's greatest hoop stars.
Against the backdrop of New York City's epidemic of drugs and crime in the 1980s and 1990s, a unique style of basketball emerged. On the blacktop, the city's courts were defined by toughness, talent, and swagger. Hip-hop converged with hoops to change the game of basketball forever. Legends were born on playgrounds, in high school gyms, and in community centers around the city. Names like Kenny the Jet Smith, Dwayne Pearl Washington, Mark Jackson, Stephon Marbury, and the Bronx's own Rod Strickland by way of Truman High School. So many familiar faces for us, including Smush Parker. They made famous a style of basketball that changed the game. All of this is on display in the Showtime documentary NYC Point Gods. It is a must-see. Here's more from the premiere's red carpet in New York City. Uh, when you think about the history of New York City point guards and their impact, not in this country, but in the world, uh, in the world of basketball, the world of music, the world of entertainment, it's a heck of a story, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. When I looked at Rod Strickland, Mark Jackson, Kenny Smith, Pearl Washington. Those were the guys, and, and in my eyes, rest in peace, he would be the best. He's the one guy that was the best, man. It was, he was awesome. I always say, nothing like a New York City point guard. NYC Point Gods, catch it now on Showtime On Demand. That's your look at sports. I'm Bobby C. In the latest installment of the Botanical Gardens Around the Table exhibit, local author Tony Hillary read his children's book, Harlem Grown. The book tells the story of a community garden started by school children in an empty lot. Art imitates real life as the story is based on the organization Harlem Grown, which turns abandoned properties into community gardens. We connect with local elementary schools and all of the planting are done by school children. The school children now own that plant. And we go through the whole process of growth with the education, the nurturing of the plant. Harlem Grown is the perfect story for young children to learn about the impacts of growing and nurturing their own food. Manager of the Children's Garden, Arvelyn Hill, was thrilled to bring this book to the garden's young guests. It's been awesome. We uh, wanted to have a story that was about food for kids, and so we thought that this was the perfect book to feature. It's no secret that children can be the toughest critics when it comes to food. So Hillary made sure to curate a story that will get children excited to try new fruits and vegetables. The story and organization also serve as a vessel for accessibility as most cannot find fresh produce in their community. We harvest and we cook said vegetables. And if a child plants it, they will eat it. If they eat it, they like it. But that's where the problem starts. You can't buy what we grow right there in our farm in that community at affordable prices. You can check out the Harlem Grown story posted throughout the Children's Garden or catch the read aloud every weekend at 2.30 at the New York Botanical Garden. Reporting for BronxNet, Brittany Schuyler Albane. Hey everyone, oh, welcome back to Open Hybrid. Our last guests are the seasoned stage veterans of Town Royalty NYC, a husband and wife duo who perform an array of originals and classic cover dance songs spanning a wide variety of genres to create their unique sound called Electro Latin Soul. Their fresh new sound combines the best attributes of each genre, creating a sonic landscape that'll keep you dancing all night long. And here to share more is Uptown Royalty NYC dynamic duo, Jody Music and Ron Renaissance. Hello and welcome. Hi, what a beautiful introduction. <laughs> well, we're introducing you to our viewers and um, I, I know they're gonna enjoy what we're gonna to present to them later, but in the meantime, I want them to get a sense of what you guys have done. Um, and, and it's very fascinating because you're, you're not only a, a, a couple, um, I know you have an offspring now, and so it must be a very interesting dynamic to be work partners and partners of life. How's that been coming along, <laughs> working out for you? It's it's a balance, you know, but every day we're growing and we're learning and Nala's a part of the band. She plays the drums, you know, so she's going to be playing with us and it's going to be a whole family affair. So <laughs> we love it. Nala? she's going to be two in September. Oh, my gosh. She's already playing the drums. 
<laughs> yes, she loves the drums. We take her to a guitar center often and she loves it. So we decided we're just going to buy her a set. <laughs> Amazing. That's amazing. So let's talk about you two though, right? So um, was the group formed prior to your marriage or after your marriage? Like, how did you guys even become partners? Okay, so long story short, we met on a gig in Times Square for Univision. Um, it was a Christmas special. We were in the room for hours. That's how we met. We went salsa dancing. And then from that day, we never parted. <laughs> and then separately, and so how long, ago, artist. Was, how long ago was that? That was about five years ago five years ago. Yeah. So on his own, he was his own artist, you know, and he's also toured the world um, with salsa bands. He's been playing since he was a kid. And then separately, I had my own music singer songwriter. And then when we met, we just combined forces and he's an amazing producer and we both love to write. And then from there, we just continued creating. And we have a lot of songs that we haven't even released yet that we're just sporadically going to be releasing. And then we decided to create this fusion between both of the styles that we that we love, which is yeah. what we did. <laughs> So that's awesome. So Ron, um, what is your goal here, right? I mean, you, you, you married into it, you, you, you formed this partnership. Not only are you a creator, you're a lyricist. I know you're both lyricists, right? And yes. so, um, but you do do covers as well. So let, 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 let's talk about what the plan is moving forward. Well, doing the covers allowed us to just be able to sharpen our skills and, and play in different venues that, um, you know, and, and create the sound with our band, uh, you know, that's real tight and, and unique. Um, as far as um, us as artists, you know, we, we, we have all these original songs that we want to put out and, and God willing, travel the world and, and, you know, have the whole world experience. This new and you play instruments too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I went to, I went to LaGuardia for a drum, trombone and, and I graduated from SUNY Purchase uh as a jazz trombonist um but also produce music and sing and rap and, and love writing and every single possible element of it yeah no 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 i saw it i saw it I, and I, and i can't wait for you guys to see it because it's got a nice vibe you know um and and you're both hot too right <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you going on up there you know, for anybody who's interested in that romance aspect of it, right? You can also incorporate <laughs> the salsa into your into your presentations, which is oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. We love salsa. Um, you know, when I was little, my dad used to always play salsa and dance with me around the house. And, you know, unfortunately he passed away when I was little, but he left that salsa loving me. And I always prayed. I was like, I want a man who can dance salsa. And then God gave me that. I was like, yay. So it's just so fun to just be able to go out and, and perform and dance and do what we love and just make people happy because that's the ultimate goal. You know, that's what we're in it for. Yeah, and you can tell you're a generally happy couple, right? But <laughs> I do, you can tell, you can tell, but I do have to just talk a little bit about the fact that you said you met like five years ago. I don't know when you got married, but I want to say we've been all locked up for approximately close to three years. So what was that like in those three years that y'all y'all had to be on top of each other? I mean, well, let me tell you, girl, I was pregnant. <laughs> I was pregnant so actually it was kind of like the perfect I mean I know the world there were so many things going crazy but it was a perfect moment for me I feel to get pregnant it was a beautiful moment for us in the house and you know he took care of me you know I was kind of nauseous and going through those motions of becoming a, a mom and that's what that time was so we actually kind of bonded in a different way because then we became parents so that was a whole nother level that we you know that we got on and so that was that situation. And honestly, like, I feel like we're really best friends. We enjoy so many things the same that like, we really do get along because we're constantly creating. We're constantly having fun. And now that we have our daughter in our lives, it's just that much more special. So really, we kind of just like have fun and creative music. And we did, even did a music video for our daughter called Nala Song. And that's what we shot during the pandemic as well. Like a, year, <laughs> a year and a half to, to shoot that. We shot, shot the, the process of me being pregnant. Yeah. Well, you know what I think is really cool is the timing aspect of it, right? So um, just out of curiosity, so if Nala's two, is Nala two going on three or is she just- No, she's one going on two in September, she'll be two. Okay, so she'll be two. So that means you guys, uh, you birthed her in 2021? 2020. 
in 2020 in the height of it. Yep. And I had a mask on and everything. And it was hard because he couldn't come into appointments with me. He had to FaceTime for the sonograms. But, you know, we got through it. And thankfully, he was able to be there for the birth of the baby and cut the cord and do all the special daddy things. So that was okay. But, yeah, it wasn't the height of it. It was it wasn't the easiest. <laughs> I usually like I usually like focusing on the silver lining of it, right? So considering that you guys are a duo and you tend to tour a lot and you're always on different stages, uh, most likely, pro most predominantly in the evenings, right? Because if you're uh, jamming with a salsa band, that would be a night. Yep. And then, um, and so you paused for a moment, and in that moment was a time for you to reflect on extending your family, or actually you were probably already there but just the fact that you were granted that time and that space to really embrace what 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 you were about to um recreate right yeah. because there's a whole recreation i mean for all of us but just in your way it was very special and congratulations on that thank you thank you so much it is super special we feel so grateful so yeah we're just we're super excited we love being parents so it's the best. But, but now we're going to move into before we go, because we have to just share how, you know, New York reopened. And of course, with that reopening, that yeah. meant gig, 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 right? Yes. Oh, and we have God. a lot of gigs coming up. So yes, we're balancing. Let's share with our viewers what you got coming up. Yeah, we have a few gigs coming up. We have Red Lion. We also have um, um, the Bronx Co-op City Mobile Stage coming up. And then we have our salsa band at the state building in the city. So we're going to actually have all this information on our website. Um, it's at uptownroyalty.nyc. So you can check out all of our upcoming dates and also our Instagram. And you can tell who's the boss of the, of the household, right? Because <laughs> takes over everything. Uh, it's okay. No, it's equal. It's equal. The boss is Nala. Nala's the boss. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm teasing, of course. I'm teasing. I, I, actually, I actually appreciate when, you know, you, a, a man can kind of just sit back and be like, you know what, I'm going to let her do what, what she does and I'll do what I do. I'm the one creating in the back. I and, mean, you know, I, I can see the dynamic. It's awesome. it's awesome. I always say that he's my calm. He's my calm. So it's balance. <laughs> All right, so it's blending fire with water. Yes, and that's what Ese Fuego is. That's Ese Fuego, <laughs> nice, nice leading. Oh my gosh, that's Uptown Royalty, NYC Dynamic Duo, Jody Music, and Ron Renaissance. And we are asking you not to go anywhere because when we return, they're going to perform Ese Fuego. You know <laughs> time for our open order spotlight here now to perform ese fuego let's give it up for uptown royalty nyc <laughs> Sounds bad. 
no puedo estar solo Apuesto todo para ganarme el otro Bien pronto yo monto la fiesta y yo choco Señor ritmo y monstruo Tromo que yo toco te vuelve loco Con ese bizcocho tan sabroso, tan maravilloso Te lo digo para no ponerte celoso Uptown Royalty que no hay otro NYC once again their single Ese Fuego is out now on all streaming platforms and if you're interested in seeing them live you can check them out at the Red Lion on August 7th taking place at 10 p.m and Co-op City Mobile Stage on August 9th at 7 p.m and at the Harlem State Building August 11th and that's taking place at 5 p.m. And for more info on them, you can check them out at uptownroyalty.nyc and check them out on IG at Uptown Royalty NYC. That is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests for coming through. To you, our viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Three Cable Cast tonight, 24 hours a day at francenet.tv. I'm Rena Valentin. And from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide paz, prosperity, y amor con mucho fuego. Es fuego. Se me pegó. <laughs> Bye.